and I see a lot of kids I work with, their first throw is 100%. Then it's, coach, my arm hurts. What's going on, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com here with the man, Nick Shaw, former Brewers middle infielder. In this video, we're talking about an infielder's throwing routine. Nick's gonna take us through his whole warm-up routine and kind of what he does to get his arm loose and, and build a stronger arm, build a better arm, more accurate arm. So stay tuned for this, a lot of good information. Nick is actually the creator of the baseball box. It's a monthly subscription box shipped directly to your doorstep. So if you've got a special ball player that you wanna take care of, check out the link below, thebaseballbox.com. Really cool stuff over there. There. We are at the USSA Space Coast Complex 15 beautiful turfed out fields here in Vieira, Florida. Nick and I actually scout for the USSA All-American Games and we've got 10 tryouts coming at this year, 2021. We didn't travel last year because of all the craziness, but this year we're back on the road. So check the link down below to see if the USSA All-American Games is coming to a town near you. If you make the team, you guys come down here to Vieira, Florida, play on these beautiful fields play in the stadium, beautiful stadium, July 18th through the 24th, 2021. So check it out. Let's get into the video. Take us through your whole throwing routine, what you used to do, and, and just share the info with us. What do you got? It's gonna be a 60 foot, 90 foot, 120 foot, 150 foot progression. And we're gonna go over different things at each distance, okay? Specifically as an infielder, for the infield, okay? The first 60 feet, you know, we're just kind of getting loose. When we're throwing, make sure we're finding the four seam grip each time. All right, but this first 60 feet is kind of all on you. Just getting loose, finding the four seam, promoting good mechanics, pulling the front side. Okay, once you get loose, we can move back to our 90. All right, but make sure you're good and loose before you go and uh, air it out. It should be about two minutes at 60, then you go two minutes at 90. But once we get out to 90, then we let it go, okay? But at 90 feet, at 90 feet, take the first about three or four, and kind of let them go. Let them go, work out the kinks. Get loose at that distance. Once you feel good and loose, you're a shortstop. So the ball's coming from your partner. You're working as if you're throwing to him as the first baseman. So receive the ball, take your time now. Act like you're catching it, turn around the base, and make the double play throw. Again, you're catching it, acting like a shortstop. Catch, get square, making your throw to first. Get five to six good reps of that. If you're a second baseman, you're catching the ball from your partner, now we're resetting. Left foot steps on the base, you make your double play turn. Again, five or six good reps at that. Catching the ball, left foot lands, right, left, making your throw to first. So you're working your double play turn. Again, if you're a first baseman, we're here following the glove, making your double play turn. You're here following the glove, making your double play turn, okay? Now, obviously, if you're a left-handed first baseman, you're just gonna field, stay square, and make a strong throw as if you're throwing it to your shortstop at second base for a double play. Third baseman, finally. Again, you're square already, moving, making the throw as if you're throwing it to your second baseman for a double play. Receiving the ball, making the throw for a double play. Again, five or six really good reps. I mean, if you wanna go further than that, by all means, go further than that but get your reps here. That way when it's time to take the field during practice, you're already ready with the footwork for the double play. After that, after the 90 foot, you're going to 120. And what this one's called is a hat drill. So you'll put your hat down about a long hop distance away from your partner, okay? So this is about a good distance. And why we're doing this is because on a relay, no matter where you are in the field, sometimes even the first baseman's involved in a relay, on a relay throw to the catcher especially, we need to either give him a ball that's in the air all the way or a long hop. They have a funny glove, all right? What we don't wanna do is give them an in-between hop or even a short hop and have them have to try to pick it with that glove on. Give them a nice, easy long hop or a ball in the air. With the hat drill, we're working on the long hop. So again, act like you're catching a relay. Moving, trying to give him a long hop. Receiving the ball again, as if you're catching a relay, try to give him a long hop, okay? And you'll be able to tell without him even telling you whether it's a good throw or not. He should not be struggling at all to catch it, all right? Now, if 120 is too close, and you're a guy that can air that all the way out, then when you go to 150, you can work on your hat drill. 
okay? But you need to know, and you're gonna find out during your throwing routine, you need to know what distance away from the catcher can I make it all the way, and what distance should I throw him a long hop, okay? If I'm 180 out, I do not need to throw a ball with a bunch of arc to try to get it all the way to him. I need to throw it on a line to try to give him a long hop. After that, if you end at 150 with the hat drill, go further to 180. If you end at 120 with the hat drill, go 30 more feet to 150. And at that final distance, you're really moving your feet, driving your legs, and making the furthest, strongest throw you can. This is an infielder's throwing routine that you can use to improve your game. How often were you doing this? I don't know if you mentioned that or not. I was doing this every day. Okay. Every day, every time I warmed up, this is the routine. Did your doing. arm ever bother you, hurt you at any point in your career? And if so, I guess I can see the answer is no, but was there anything else that you were doing to keep your arm strong and free from injury? So I stretched a lot and I had a, a shoulder program that I did with five pound weights and I would do the shoulder program every single day. On top of that, I would stretch. I was a big guy that stretched a lot, a lot, a lot. So I was always stretching, even if I was in the field on defense, I was always stretching. Stretching, staying loose, that was my thing. Whether it kept me healthy or not, I don't know, but I was able to have a long career of, of good health with my arm. What about as far as being warmed up? Are you throwing to warm up or are you warming up to throw? Like, would you do anything before you did this? I wasn't big on bands. Um, I know that's popular and it might be great for you. I'm sure it's great for you. I didn't have bands when I was a kid, so I would just grab a ball in the first 60 feet or so. Nice and easy, I would warm up that way. That way after the 60 feet, I was ready to throw. And before that, like before, like obviously you're not doing bands or anything, but are you doing like some running or jogging or stretching or, or anything of that nature? Yep. Or are you just coming out and grabbing a ball and, and warming up that way? Always warm up before. That's a great point. Stretch. Whether you're doing high knees, karaoke, get the blood flowing. Get the blood flowing before you come out here cold and grab a ball. And I see a lot of kids I work with, their first throw is 100%. Then it's coach, my arm hurts. Warm up, get the blood pumping, okay, before you go in and grab a ball or do anything on this field. A good warm up is, is a must. Well, there you go. There's your infield throwing progression, throwing tips, throwing technique, whatever you want to call it. Great stuff. I like the hat drill. That's a really good one, especially when you're working on those cuts or the plays at home, throwing, at, especially from an outfielder, throwing a third, throwing a home, making a nice tag, even from the middle infielder being the cutoff man, making that throw to home or whatever it is. So really cool information. Sorry if I'm repeating you. I was way out there. I couldn't hear everything you were saying, but great stuff. Guys, Nick has his own YouTube channel now, so I want you to go over there and subscribe to his channel. He's got a lot of great information that's coming out real soon, so go over there and subscribe. I'll leave the link below where you can do that. Also, again, just to reiterate, if you guys are interested in trying out for the UCCSA All-American Games, link is down in the description for more information. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got any questions or comments, hop down in the comment section below. Nick and I will be happy to answer them for you. Thanks, guys.